um, so David Hughes and I sort of discussed on how to partition the subject between the five lectures that we're giving, and um, somehow um, I uh, felt that somehow talking about lo primarily about localization was a very uh, is an easier thing to do rather than having to talk about how systems localize and delocalize. So in uh, the three lectures that I'm going to attempt, I will focus primarily on the local, you know, on the localized behavior. And so, um, so the the first half of the lecture, I am going to try to start with general remarks to give you a feeling for what we are interested in. So I'm going to start with the first question. Well, so general comments. I, by the way, I, I don't have a good feeling for how visible my writing is from, you know, a parsec away. <laughs> so feel free to uh, ask me to write larger um, or move closer. Seems like now we have AC in this room, so it's, it's actually not hazardous to your health to move closer. Um, okay, so I think uh, um, one thing that's, uh, that bears discussion is just to have an idea physically, not in the language of sharp definitions, but just physically, what is it the what is localization? Put it in quotation marks. If you go on Google Scholar and you type in localization, um, you generally do not find necessarily Anderson localization or many body localization. You find all kinds of localization in biological literature. Um, so there is a but the kind of localization we're interested in is localization in quantum uh, problems. And so there's a modern perspective, which we already heard some definitions about. So the modern perspective is localization is absence of thermalization. in the sense that David defined precisely. Um, so I'll use a shorthand and I'll say that the reduced density matrices upon time do not flow to familiar ones from equilibrium step mech. That's one modern aspect. Another modern aspect is that most, in fact, the, main, the localized systems that we know best are the ones where, in some sense, all of um, information, all of local information, in other words, physical information, information is retrievable, or I'll say maintained, on time evolution. And I'll, and I'll illustrate this example somewhat more concretely later. Um, and another modern perspective entanglement on localization is that there's a, uh, there's a, there are sharp signatures of absence of thermalization or presence of localization in entanglement properties of time evolution or, e or even eigenstates. Now these are modern perspectives and they're, s they're slowly but or quickly but and, sh and surely are taking over in some sense. Um, at least in the theory land. So more conventional uh, definitions that right, so there's modern definitions and the more conventional definitions. I'm going to put a break here. Okay. Well, um, conductivity. Going to zero as frequency and system size are taken on the right limits. That, that, that should be discussed. Um, 
Now, if we talk about particles, not spins or qubits or anything sort of newfangled, talking about particles, we might want to just draw potential. And Brian DeMarco will be doing this shortly, but possibly. And we imagine solving the Schrodinger equation in this, in a, sorry, it is draw the potential. In, in some inhomogeneous potential that might have been left behind by uh, the way uh, a solid was made by quenching from high temperatures. And the idea is that now we're solving Schrodinger equation um, and there will be a wave function that is located here. I'll write it as the first quantum condition, psi of x. And uh, we can look at objects which are, for example, variants of um, position in this particle uh, in the state, um, and ask whether that's a number or if, if that goes to zero. So if we had a bound state, you know, those of you still remembering uh, hydrogen atoms, these things are numbers, important numbers. And so, in some sense, localization is formation of bound states in systems without regular structures like, you know, positive nucleus. Um, so this is a constant with respect to this state. Operating. Quantum operators. Quantum operators, sorry, I didn't see who was asking. Yeah. No, the idea is that, look, it's, it's a bound state. There's nothing to there's nothing deep about it, but you know, if you, um, you know, if the size, so the interesting uh, regimes is where the size of this bound state is not necessarily determined by some, you know, bore radius, but is rather an interplay between, you know, basically if these states start getting hybridized because there will be quantum tunneling between these states, and so if these bound states somehow are larger than what your naive guess might have been, those are the interesting physical situations, and, and they may not be so easy to identify right away. Right, so it's always useful to write down observables which are trivial, just a second, which are trivial in some extreme limit, but which may continue to be really good observables, in particular if you take this observable uh, for plane waves, it's zero, because the amplitude of the wave function at any particular location, um, Here, here I, I did not define what conductivity is. I just imagine that you kind of know, uh, you know, you know that there's 50 hertz in a, you know. So I think doing this carefully is important, and I'm, I'm not going to tackle it today. The idea is that there's a conductivity, and the idea is that conductivity is the rate of absorption of power by a piece of wood or a piece of metal, right? And so the uh, notion of localization is at least in most practical terms, is vanishing of the conductivity. Um, but to get that, you have to take certain limits. Right? You have to, because at any finite frequency, you know, in physics there are generally no, zero, no strict zeros, right? so you have to ask about limiting behavior. Is that clear? Again, this is what I thought were important general comments, because I don't know how much of you guys are theorists, experimentalists, how much of you just sort of stragglers from high energy physics, and I, I kind of just wanted to um, make sure that there, isn't, there aren't any sort of a simple to fill gaps. Okay, and it's worth taking 15, 20 minutes. Feel free to ask questions. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so here the averages were meant with respect to an eigenstate, but one can also imagine literally saying that now instead of dealing with an eigenstate, let's take, and how do I write this? Yeah, let's take a state at the origin and time evolve it with the Hamiltonian, which I haven't specified yet, and we'll call, I'll call it time evolved state t. And the idea is that if all of the, the entire spectrum looks like a bunch of lumps like this, even if you don't know what the eigenstates are, if you just start it as a initial state where you just put something with 100% probability here, it will evolve in time, but it will never uh, 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 move far away. 
right? So that, that, that variance will remain constant. Okay, so that's, uh, so conductivity, localization in the sense of a wave packet sit, just sitting there. Those are the um, sort of familiar definitions of localization from the single particle literature. Now, these definitions become complicated or just generally problematic if you're dealing with many body localized systems where you have a bunch of particles in multiple wells and you're trying to decide how to compute these averages. Conductivity is still a measurable object, but again, actually computing it is uh, not easy. So one way to generalize this kind of a, I think what we now refer to as quench experiment is to start with a product state. Now, now, we're, okay. now for many body local. For those of you who came in late, I'm welcoming any uh, uh, feedback from the audience as far as how visible this is. So, you know, I, I can try to write larger. There's a shadow. You see the shadow? Just this the shadow. shadow. Just right. And that shadow is a problem, okay? That shadow is very visible. But you cannot. So visible, so it's okay. Dark side of the board, okay. <laughs> I'm sure write a song about that. Um, right, so in many body localized systems, we would like to, again, be able to have options about what to study. And I think towards uh, the end of these lectures, I will uh, make very specific and very sort of, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you a tally of what people have tried because there are many, many observables, but the most naive generalization of this sort of a put things down and see if they've moved is this idea that you can start again at time equals zero. You can start with a state that's a simple product state. So if you have a bunch of spins, you imagine taking some kind of a bit string and um, there's some people might refer to this as a um, classical state because with 100% probability you know which, which way the spins point. Um, and again, you uh, just to uh, uh, resonate with the discussion in the first, uh, uh, first lecture, you know, I think, yes, it's difficult to prepare pure states, but these kinds of pure states, I think, are the ones where you have the best luck with. And of course, one has to be quantitative with such statements, I'm not going to be, because I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to ask, now consider time evolving this state. And the, the, the idea of entanglement, the notion of entanglement, I was surprised that we didn't get a definition of that. I guess it wasn't necessary. Um, the idea of entanglement is that as time moves forward, so this, is, so this state is a state at time equals zero, at much later time, I'll say time much, much bigger than one, assuming that we, all, you know, we have some units of time in mind. Um, the idea is that these same one to four spins will develop into a state where instead of being able to know with absolute certainty which way the first spin points, you might have an entangled sort of a, a, a dimer a singlet or you know, so some kind of an entangled state where the probability of this spin pointing up will be conditional and that spin pointing down and so on and so forth. So some kind of a, sorry, sorry. I'm using these, uh, uh, these lines to denote sort of a, you know, um, dot, you know entanglement formation in the system. And a little bit of that will always happen even in, um, weakly interacting systems, and the question is that as we go to late times, do we lose all of this classical memory, or some of it, is, uh, uh, some of it uh, remains? So this is, I'll call this loosely, washing out of classical, classical memory. And, you know, these natural cartoons can be turned into objects to conserve as order parameters for whether you are in a many body localized phase or not. So, as I said, I'll, I'll hopefully get to that in lecture three. <laughs> but th these are the kinds of things that we have in mind when we discuss 
localization behavior versus not. Um, okay. So, uh, yep. you mentioned like, the typical size of the wave function, the radius squared average wave. Right. So, if we have like really localized wave function, it's just some finite number, but if we have no potential, it scales basically like. There's normalization essentially, one over root L. What happens if you end up having like the, that it still scales with the size of the system, but there's some other power like one? Or Critical wave functions do that. So that's not generic behavior. The belief is that, uh, uh, you know, to get something in between what plane waves do and, and what localized states do, you actually need to either fine tune something or you need to find a Hamiltonian that has a structure that sort of prefers that structure wave functions, that's, you know, I would say that's uh, non-generic and that's very interesting, people tend to. So is it usually only about the critical states? Yeah. Well, not, not I, I don't want to say usually, typically. Okay. platform. All right, um, so, um, so I think next question of general importance is does it exist? So I started with A, B, and by it you can, we can start by uh, discussing Anderson localization, single particle localization, or we can talk about Many body localization, what I'm saying is, what I'm going to say is relatively safely ge generic. So the answer is yes, as an intermediate, intermediate scale behavior. And in models. Um, and one way to sort of relate to condensed matter physics more generally is, uh, you know, one can, but that's a purely a matter of taste. Because, you know, once it exists as an intermediate scale behavior, then one should just study how, you know, how to make use of it. And uh, just to put it in the context, uh, it can, can it be or it can be as useful is useful as spontaneous symmetry breaking, perhaps. And th th this analogy is symmetry breaking. The usefulness of this analogy is not really something that uh, has been decided yet, but the basic, but let me at least explain the, uh, what I mean. Um, to find, the mag uh, to find spontaneous symmetry breaking in the magnet, uh, one needs to realize uh, a system of interacting spins with no external field. Right. It just doesn't exist. Not on this planet, not elsewhere in the universe. There's always some external symmetry breaking field. And then the question uh, becomes, when you actually observe um, a magnetized uh, uh, sample, is it its magnetization due to the external field or in internal field, and you know, one, one has to be quantitative about it. But the notion of something sharp existing in, uh, under some idealized condition has a long history of being useful, because then you can organize your thinking by starting with this sort of a model situation where things are perfect, and then introducing um, perturbations, i.e. the real world. Okay, a somewhat related, that, it, 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 it's kind of a, it's almost a philosophical statement, but I feel that in this introductory stage, uh, it's, it's not a bad, it's the only place I could find where to stick it. Um, um, does it exist in nature? Yes, yes. Then, all right, so why study it? So this is a bit of a, useless question because, well, one of them is it exists in nature. 
reason, as I already said, that there is a uh, quantitative um, 